Hello Aviators, Sky here, and to be honest, I wasn't sure whether or not I even want to make a video about our today's hero. Being the newest model of the Tupolev Design School of Civilian Aviation, this plane is more sad than positive. But since the engines are running, let's fly. Tupolev Tu-334 is an original passenger aircraft developed by the Tupolev Design Bureau. Developed for a long time, actually, but let's say roughly in the 1990s. That being said, this case was started in the late 1980s, when the flagship model 2204 was preparing for tests. The concept of the airliner's family, about which I spoke in the 2204 video, prevailed, and the future original aircraft was considered a junior modification of the 204. The proximity of the design and the large number of common elements should have both simplified the creation of the machine and cut the expenses of its production and, of course, operation. The implementation of this idea was the first scheme of the future aircraft. Technically, it was the same 2204, but with a reduced weight, shortened fuselage and less powerful engines. Something like the modern Airbus A318. The plane was supposed to accommodate about 100 passengers and have a range of nearly 15 to 20 hundred miles. However, by that time several rather interesting new features appeared in the aviation industry. The main one was the new power plants, prop fan engines, a hybrid between the usual turboprop and turbofan engines. A bright example of this technology is the D-27, which at the time was being prepared for the Antonov An-70 transport aircraft. Equipped with two rows of blades, these motors could provide a sufficiently large speed and were quite economical. The idea arose to create a modification of such an engine for the 2334. It was a trend of the time. General Electric also created an engine of that type, the GE-36, and even tested it on Flying Labs MD-81 and Boeing 727. Naturally, locating such engines under the wing was extremely difficult, and the layout of the aircraft changed. Now the engines were located in the tail section, according to the classical scheme, and the aircraft received a T-tail. Thus, in the early 1990s, the design bureau was considering two versions of the airliner, with classic jet engines and with exotic prop fans. However, the life of commercial prop fan engines was short. Such motors were quite noisy and complex, and their fanciness would delay certification. In addition, their main advantage, fuel efficiency, in conditions of a sharp drop of fuel prices at that time was not critical. The more familiar jet engines were preferred. Therefore, at the moment, such projects haven't received any development, and Tupolev was left with only one option – the classic D-436 turbofans. All this work, as well as the difficult financial situation of the design bureau, coupled with the prolonged certification and the launch of the 2204 airliners on the market, led to a considerable delay in the creation of this original aircraft. As a result, the prototypes were ready only 10 years after the start of the project. In February 1999, the 2334 prototype made the first test flight. During the subsequent time, two flight prototypes were made, as well as several gliders for ground testing. In 2003, the first 2334-100 was introduced, which was supposed to become the first serious production version. In the same period, the aircraft received a type certificate. So, let's see what they have developed this time. According to the general design, the 2334 belongs to one of the classic types of modern jet aircraft, with a low wing, T-tail and two turbofan engines installed in the rear of the fuselage. The aircraft, being in fact a part of the 2204 family, has many features in common with its older brother. The wing has modern mechanization and many common elements with the wing of the 2204, although it was significantly reduced in size. The fuselages are very close. Due to the reduction of its length, the fuselage of the 2334 is shorter. The width, however, is the same – 12 and a half feet, or 3.8 meters. Like the 2204, the interior has a layout of six seats in a row with a 3 plus 3 scheme. According to this scheme, in a single class layout, the aircraft can accommodate up to 102 passengers. Most of these aircraft's onboard systems are also unified. The airliners are equipped with a fly-by-wire control system. The cockpits are almost completely identical. Yes, the three crew members also moved here. Power plant 2D436T1 turbofans. 
Created in the late 1980s, this engine, in various modifications, was installed on the AN-148 and its versions, as well as the Beriev 200 amphibious aircraft. Being considered quite promising, the 2334 was supposed to receive many modifications, including the more spacious, adapted for foreign engines, special government and military versions. The first implemented version was the first series 2334-100 and that's it. Well, there were only two aircraft assembled, what do you want? The fate of this plane was not as bright as that of its older brothers, which it was supposed to replace. In the early 2000s, the Russian Airspace Agency initiated a competition to create a future regional airliner. The purpose of the competition was to determine the priority project for financing in the federal program for the next 10 to 15 years. The leaders of the competition were the Tupolev Design Bureau with the 2334 model and the new project of the Suhoi company, the Russian regional jet, the future super jet. The winner was the SSJ-100, despite the fact that this aircraft was on the early stages of development, while the 2334 was almost ready. This prevented the aircraft from reaching serial production. Over the next years, sometimes there were plans of buying the prototypes for commercial use, as well as organization of limited production for the Russian government structures. However, these plans were not realized. As a result, the serial production was never launched, and just two planes remained that periodically resurfaced at the air shows. In 2017, the Project 2334 was closed. Sometimes it is remembered, but let's face reality. This time, Jon Snow is dead. But the question remains, why? It was almost ready, and it was not a bad plane. All it needed was to organize the production and that's it. So why was it abandoned? Some people blame the Suhoi company for lobbying their SSJ project and killing the 2334 program. But we can try to dig a little deeper and look a little wider. So, in the late 1980s, the Tupolev Design Bureau developed a concept of a family of airplanes with various capacities, created on the basis of the 2204. A large number of common engineering solutions, structural elements and onboard systems made it possible to reduce development costs and later, with mass production, significantly reduce production costs making it more effective. Airlines could also form a fleet of aircraft, using modifications of the same plane, which made it possible to reduce the cost of training personnel and crews, as well as optimize maintenance. It would seem awesome. This concept was considered quite promising, in fact, it was also implemented in parallel by the Airbus concern that based on the A320 was creating its smaller versions, the A318 and A319, as well as an enlarged version, the A321. The disadvantage of this idea is the fact that the most efficient in the family is supposed to be the basic model, which in fact was created originally. The rest of the models, not designed for a specific niche, are a compromise between performance and production efficiency. For example, the 2204 fuselage has a width of 12.5 feet and a layout of 6 seats in a row, which is the most optimal design for a 200-seat medium-range airliner. The same can be said about the basic Airbus A320, for example. However, in the case of regional aircraft, a similar width with a significant reduction of length leads to the fact that we get too wide a fuselage with non-optimal dimensions. In theory, this disadvantage was compensated by the economic advantage of using the family and mass production, which allowed the little Airbus models to be relatively successful for a long time. However, considering that the 2204 eventually did not become popular, all the benefits of unification were invalidated, while the disadvantages remained. In addition, the 2334 was created in the 1990s, in the conditions of the global aviation market of that time, when its main competitors were to be the A319 and the Boeing 717. Compared to them, the 334 is pretty good. But already in the beginning of the 21st century, a new generation of Bombardier CRJ-700 jetliners and its enlarged versions, as well as the new Embraer E-Jet family, entered the scene. These liners, initially created as original, were more economically efficient than their predecessors, which were just modifications. Over the next years, these models conducted a massive expansion around the world. 
The result of this was the closure of the Boeing 717 program, as well as a drop in demand of the A318 and A319 airliners, which led to the fact that now, in the Neo generation, the A318 and 19 are abandoned. Airbus now has the new, much more effective plane on the market, the A220, previously the Bombardier C-series. The SSJ-100 airliner is a representative of the new, initially original jet generation. Due to this, the new plane is more effective, and the competition on the market is very tough. You're either the best, or you don't exist. In addition, the aircraft has international certificates that open export opportunities for it, which the 334 could not count on. And the domestic market is too small for the development of such an aircraft. The need of the government structures in the local aircraft is satisfied by the 2204 and AN 148 airliners. The 2334 is the topic of disputes of many experts in Russia. Some consider the plane a failure, others claim that the ambition of aviation industry officials killed the promising project. And on these words, I will finish the story and temporarily stop the Tupolev Marathon. Many interesting planes are waiting for us in the future. Leave your comments below and subscribe to the channel. Fast flights and soft landings to you.